there, Pump Up Nation! Business Legends is a podcast dedicated to interviewing today's business leaders and entrepreneurs so that its listeners can learn from their successes, pump up their own inspiration, and learn the motives behind the people who make change happen. I'm the host of the show, Reese Arlen, along with my bestie and co-host, Christian Webb. Say what's up! Not for long. No. <laughs> I might have I might have just, after 40-something episodes, uh, I might have just convinced him to quit. Today we are joined by a really good friend of ours, uh, Rich Moyer, who has more businesses than I can count. Good morning, Rich. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Man, um, so I was just reading on the news, by the way, that if somebody's been in your life for four years, it means that, they're in, that they'll be in your life forever. And you were one of our original guests on Business Legends four years ago. And we've been texting you and bothering you ever since. So you're in our lives forever, forever from here on out. So um, I just want to say, on behalf of Christian and I, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so how you been, man? What's what's new in the world of Hoppin' and the world of Rich Moyer? I'll probably ignore those texts from here on out. But, uh, <laughs> life is good. Hoppin' is growing. So a lot of exciting stuff um, coming up, which is cool. Absolutely, man. So uh, let's let's dig into it. Um, so Hoppin', Penthouse, um, God, you have so many businesses. I don't even I don't even know how to keep them. How do you keep them on track? Like, what's what's your day to day business like? Uh, it's pretty high level now. I yeah, mean, it's a lot of focuses on hopping brands. My business partners that uh, or business partner that runs the ice cream shop, he handles all the day to day, and it's kind of free peace of mind for me on that side of things. But hopping is high level just kind of focusing on the growth and where we're headed over the next three to five years. And, and where, where do you see that taking place? Uh, definitely with franchising starting, our sure. website getting finished it up here soon and ads starting to roll through. Uh, we'd like to get uh, at least five to 10 new franchisees signed up in the next 12 months. Yeah. And then after that, really start to snowball and, and grow quickly. It's incredible. Um, the first time we had you on the show, Hoppin' was, it, it wasn't, brand new but it was new probably within the six months or the year yeah, something it would have like been that. A, a year yep give yeah or take. so gosh it's incredible to see how things go um you know it's funny how how memories come back one of the things that i remember you saying on that show because you had these businesses operating here and there and everywhere back then was that it was all about people and uh, go figure you know you, you yeah. stick with your people went through covid um i'm sure that those were tumultuous times but we don't need to don't need to discuss those um, and now you're here. You are franchising with things, so really exciting time to be alive, man. Um, yeah, I'm already I'm already seeing your work and like <clears throat> in live on the uh, hopping brands on the yeah. franchise. Like I was telling I was telling Rich the other day, I was like, man, I can like literally see you putting people in place right now and slowly stepping back one foot at a time. Mm -hmm. Like it's like I'm watching it happen. Yeah, yeah. And it, I'm like I'm like, do you do that? And no, Zach does that. Oh, do you do that? No, no, Jake does that. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh man, that's like he's a pro at this. Like, yep. I'm jealous, kind of, to be it, honest. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, we we were actually at Hoppin uh, for Corey's birthday. Um, uh, it's less than a month ago. I don't know. Yeah, it was whenever. But um, obviously, I was being Reese and drinking some beer skis and whatever. And and uh, Christian's like, dude, look at this. And I was like, I was like, what beer? He's like, no, the <laughs> other way, man. And um, so. We, you know, we think about branding a lot, even when we're we're off the scene, off of off yeah. the clock or whatever. But you know, as well as anybody, business owners are never really off the clock. And you know, he's he's looking at this. Uh, there's a kangaroo and a frog and a rabbit. You yeah. know, and I'm like, and I'm like, animals. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, he's like, he's like, no, dude, think about it for a second. I was like, beer. He's like, come on, Reese, what? What do these animals do? And then it just clicked, you know, and for everybody else, you know, that would have looked at that and put it together that, you know, um, especially in the branding space, been like, yeah. oh, hopping. But man, it's so cool. You have that that subtle inflection with it. Really cool artwork and stuff. Um, so I, I want to ask you now that you're on the show, how do things like that contribute to your brand? Do you think that they've kind of given it its own unique flavor? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, in Greenville, we have a couple other like a grasshopper and I think we have like six different animals down there and they're mm -hmm. all hop. So yeah. Being able for our franchisees, that's one thing that they'll be able to choose, like what type of artwork will they want or what animals will they want based off of what we kind of created. And if they have some other ideas, they can. And then they can make it city specific. Um, I don't know if you noticed the frog at Hoppin has the crown on it for the Queen I, City. I so did notice that. Yep. It's the little subtle things that maybe one out of 10 people might catch while they're in there. Yeah. Um, but it, it is part of our brand. So as we grow and go to different cities, they can make it a little bit more tailored to their city to be more in the community. But see, I that think that's in. the beauty of it, though, because, like, the fact that only one out of ten people see it, the geniuses of the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, the fact that we're the not, ones I thought they not were Not the cool. beer drinker? <laughs> not the beer drinker, no, no, no. The geniuses. Hey, beer drinkers keep the lights on. <laughs> but, but when we see it, 
it starts a conversation. If it was obvious and everybody got it, it wouldn't start a conversation. Right. Yeah. It, and, you know, one of the things about branding is that I don't think that people have to know 100% of your intent. And most people probably won't, won't get it all the way like that. Right. But just seeing something like that that has a cool stylistic thing to it. And uh, it's really neat. We've been down to the Greenville one as well. And I didn't notice at that time, but now I kind of want to go back yeah. and look to it. Um, but uh, it's kind of having that consistent brand um, image to it. And I don't know. I just think it's really cool, man. Um, it's really cool to see creative things. I'm not the most creative person. Christian complains about it all the time. But <laughs> um, it, it's just really neat to see a lot of those things get put together. Um, so talking about hopping, um, you're on the high level. How, how often are you in the... Um, the the places now the facilities on premise as far as like open wise rarely ever wow. um really put a lot of ownership and in, in our managers and our team to handle the day-to-day -day stuff but uh i will stop in at each location other than greenville the two charlotte locations i'm there two three four times a week just in and out um speaking with our managers or meeting have our team meeting and then greenville i try and get down there once a quarter um, which is tough. I mean, once a quarter, once a quarter for a business. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Not just a business. This is like a like yeah. a two level like yeah self -ports. humongous seventy yeah. seven hundred square feet. Yeah, um, that's ridiculous. So it's, teach me. It's just amazing people. You know, I put a lot of a lot of ownership in their position. Not necessarily equity in the company, but ownership in their position to to let them know like, hey, if something happens at your location, I'm coming to you. Right? It's sure. It's going to be you to give me some answers. And luckily amazing people the business is pretty simple to run which i think is one of the key factors i mean i had a construction company that i was doing every single thing every single day and sure. that's where i kind of learned i need to step back and start to put some ownership in other people if i wanted to enjoy life so that's really where it came in from was three years of 18 hour 19 hour work days yeah yeah th those get real old real quick the, and they age you quickly it's like you got a double flavor there too because it's like not only did you get free time and they would live your life it also like secretly gave you the ability to invest in new businesses yeah yeah it does open up a lot of people think i know my parents kind of that old school mentality like we got to be here we mm -hmm. have to run it we have to cook at the restaurant um that to me is a little bit more old school and you can't grow that way sure and they will always have just one restaurant right um i saw if i invested in people and maybe it was a little hit early on that gave me the freedom to grow and continue to do what I thought was the most important, which was to provide jobs to help individuals and, you know, help the cities that we go into. Sure. Um, can you think of a, a specific time? One of the things you, you said you mentioned there was like, if there's a problem in your in your facility, then I'm coming to you. It's not the other way yeah. around. Um, can you think of a specific time that that something like that has happened and how you kind of got through the conflict, if that makes sense? Yeah, I think I might have said this on the other po uh, podcast we had four years ago. To me, there's there's only wins and learning lessons. There's never a loss. So being able to go to my manager um, in Greenville, for instance, uh, the guys that closed the night before didn't set up everything properly for the next day, and we had a huge event coming in early. Mm -hmm. So the person opening then had to deal with all this headache, had to deal with a scheduled cleaning for our line, our beer lines to be clean that never got switched because our manager didn't handle switching it. So Oof. we have a huge event of 200 people coming in early in the day and nothing is where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So not only does that put a lot of stress on the assistant manager that's opening, you also now just upset a $5,000 event. Yeah. Oof. Um, so for me, it's, all right, let's, let's figure out how we can fix up this instance now. So we get, you know, Ashley, who's our events manager involved, we get the, our manager down there involved, and we figure out what we can do to make it right. And at that point, it's just, hey, what did we learn from this? How can we fix it? I'm going to the manager, make sure this never happens again, or, there will be some consequences. But for the most part, I don't handle things as I'm going at you direct and I'm just going to crush you with, mm -hmm. why'd you do this? This is unacceptable. Hey, this is unacceptable, but what'd you learn from it? And how can we not do this again and learn from it? Yeah, I feel like you can't get any better that way. If you're always beating on people. Yeah, and people don't want to work for you that way. Right. No. Right, I mean, it's it, the culture starts at my level, Yeah. Uh, at the CEO or the owner's level. And do you, if you're beating on people like that, they're... They're going to go somewhere else. Yeah. Makes me think about the mustache a little more. I must okay. ask you some more questions, by mm -hmm. the way. Get this on camera, Kaylee. This this mustache is here to stay for at least another it's episode. It's hard to get it off I love camera, it. I promise. I, I love it. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's it's going to be a thing. What if what if Business Legends becomes becomes the biggest podcast, like Joe Rogan style, all thanks to this mustache? Uh, I'll wear one. <laughs> <laughs> I will shave and leave it. There we go. There we go. So, so what, what's it, what's it gonna take? What's it gonna take for you to rock a mustache for one month, Rich? 
my issue is I hate shaving, like okay. completely shaving. Oh, you could have been like, you have to buy a Hoppins franchise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is one issue. The other issue is once it gets past about where it's at right now, mm -hmm. I can't. I got to trim it. It's uh, just absolutely it gets itchy. itchy is, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I had that for a while, you know, but you, you kind of grow into it. So um, since I've been a part of your Hoppin Brands process, and just so everybody knows, Hoppin Brands is the franchise side. Yeah. And um, so since I've been a part of like a lot of steps in that, I've noticed that there's a lot of things you have to do to make a franchise worthy of purchasing. And uh, you've done all those things, of course. But like one of the things I've noticed is just getting licensed in all these different states. Yeah. How's that been? And where 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 is Hopper Brands licensed now? Yeah, currently there's I think there's 12 states that you have to actually get approved or licensed in. Each one is different. Some of them are a little bit more in depth, like New York. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So pretty much Texas, Florida. Um, all the licensed locations that we need, Maryland, Virginia. The only ones we haven't done is California and New York, just because oh. they're a little bit more in depth. Yeah. Austin would be such a good one. Austin, Texas. Yeah, yeah. That's like uh, that's like they they say that's like the Asheville and the Portland. They're all like they're all like sisters. Yeah, that'd be like right on point. It would Austin's be. heavy for us to to get into. Austin, Dallas. I mean, just Texas in general is growing rapidly. Florida's growing rapidly. So any city that state that's growing. Anybody out there in Austin, make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> paying attention. Hoppin's coming to you. It's so exciting. Um, we we love um, both Penthouse and Hoppin. Um, we we find ourselves there frequently. Um, I was texting Rich. I don't know, two or three weeks ago, I guess it's been. Um, so you know, I did the stand-up comedy thing. I failed, failed five-minute stand-up stand-up comedian. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to quit. He's my doing day a lot job. of standing up. Let's put it I'm doing way. a lot of standing up, yes, and and holding a microphone in front of my face. But um, you know, one of the things um, that I've always really appreciated about you is that if somebody comes to you with with an idea of some sort, um, you'd be like, okay, what's what's it going to take to make it? work? It's not like a, it's not like a no, that's a stupid idea. It's like it's like what's it going to take to make it work? Yeah. Um, You've done the same thing for us with with ABC Carolinas, where um, you know we we approach you with this idea of having some events in the space and whatever, and that was that was the first thing you said, like what what does it take to make it work? Let's make this happen, type yeah. of thing. Um, what what's your decision making process for things like that? I know you keep things on a high level, but when it comes to new partnerships, ideas, events, so on and so forth. Yeah, a lot of that is just kind of being transparent with my staff and being transparent with who wants to hold the event. But we've always been an open book and we've always created these spaces for the community to come in and have events. So we've just figured that the best way to do it is what do you want to do and how can we make it happen? And we've had llamas, we've had animals llamas. yeah, at, for weddings at, at Penthouse. So we've, oh, we've awesome. done pretty much <laughs> the wildest stuff that you can think of. Yeah. Um, but being able to give that, again, give that ownership to Ashley, our events manager and the manager at each location to say, you know, what are we willing to kind of want to deal with and at what price point is that going to be worth dealing with mm -hmm. um, Sure, is is great. And it also gives them the flexibility, right? If your budget for an event is $2,000, but somebody else budget is a little bit higher, all right, where can we fit them in that we know we're going to make money, it's going to work for both parties, and this event that's can pay a little bit more, maybe that's a Saturday night or a, a Friday evening. But, yeah, just more putting the ownership in them and giving them the kind of the, the flexibility to – to make decisions um, yeah. and learn mm -hmm. from it. If it doesn't work out, cool. So we, one, we of the thing, do that again. one of the things I really like about the Hoppin brand is the fact that you've made such an amazing customer experience, but yet for franchise buyers, it has pretty low overhead. Yeah. Like tell, tell us your secret, like what you got there. No secrets, man. It's just no hard, secrets. hard work and finding the well, right people. I guess people. now it's in the brochure. Yeah. So what's yeah. in the brochure? <laughs> for $50,000, you can get all the secrets. <laughs> nice. um, so, that portion of being in the construction world and working, like I said, 16, 18 hours a day and kind of having to be there all the time, I wanted to get into something that was a little bit more of hands off, but it ran itself um, and low overhead, low employees. I had 50 employees and over 200 contractors running around when I had my construction company. So being able to have a tech based, more tech based bar, which eliminates a lot of the headaches, the overheads less and then your profit margins are higher. So normal profit for a, a keg is going to be 75 percent typically but then you're going to have you know 25 percent waste yep on spill. top of that um mm -hmm. given away by bartender spilling whatever it may be our our waste is three to four percent mm -hmm. so not only is our gross margin 75 to 80 percent you're also rolling with three percent waste on that as it goes so overall the business itself is a it's a great model it's low overhead the way we've structured our pay structure and, and everything in that portion of it. I mean, your biggest expense, 
is your rent. And then after that, it's just getting people in the door. Mm -hmm. um, it's a numbers game at that point because once you cover your nut, you know, everything is going straight to the bottom line. Yeah, and after you measure demographics, people will come as long as you put it in the right spot. Put it in the right spot around other restaurants and bars. Make it mm -hmm. two stories, make it pretty. That's it. Ready, set, go. <laughs> it's it's an incredible franchise. Um, Look out for hotels coming up on the Skyline View. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Make sure make sure they don't get <laughs> don't get in your way with that stuff. Um, so um, on on the subject of, of franchising and and um, you know keeping keeping low overhead and things like that, um, you know one of the things that that I've learned you know watching your brand, watching watching your uh, facilities over the years is um, also with with employment and things like that because yep. you have to you have to employ if I'm not mistaken less people to manage it because they're not actively pouring things and stuff. Yeah. Um, but the other thing, much to your credit, is that you know when people get with you, they just stick with you. I mean, you've had people mm -hmm. like um, that have stayed with you for years and years and years since the time <coughs> we did our first interview. Yeah, pretty much our entire staff, uh, management staff has been with me from day one or shortly after that. Wow, um, so <laughs> it's incredible. Five and a half years. I think the employee staff portion of it, staffing portion of it, you technically need the same amount of people you would need if you're running just a bar. Mm -hmm. It's just a different customer experience. And then it's also the ability to focus, those guys focus on the experience instead of focusing on spitting out drinks. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, you, the other benefit is if for some reason two people can't show up, I can still run the bar with two people instead of four. Right. Or six people don't, you know, six people I'm supposed to have and I only have four people running. Yeah, you're not scrambling as much. Yeah, because it's just they, those four people have to hustle a little bit more and the customer experience might come down a little bit. Sure. But for the most part, there is benefits of the self-serve aspect of it. Yeah. Um, you know, on Business Legends, we like to talk about innovations. And um, I know that's that's Christian's favorite subject. And, and let's try to keep him off the, the AR and VR subject this once. But it's tough. Um, it's tough. It's yeah. tough. He'll mention it every single time. How do you how do you think augmented reality is going to affect Hoppin? There you go. There's your question. But um, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it is an innovative system. You know, you have the self-poor guidance system, um, which I'm sure on – on the cuff is is a great um, technology to have. I'm also sure that it has its own shortcomings. Like, do people steal wristbands and, and stuff like that? Right. Um, so how do you how do you deal with implementing this innovation? And and actually, the thing that comes to my mind when I was at Penthouse uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, I was I was with uh, an older lady and she didn't know how to work the thing. So how do you how do you navigate through those innovational challenges? Yeah, I mean, we used to have a, a old system that we actually had to get rid of just because it had a lot of hardware issues, a lot of technical issues, and our managers and staff were spending more time trying to fix it than they were customer facing. So we went to a new system that was a little bit more bulletproof, has minimal to no problems. Um, so the innovation is, for me, the focus is technology is always changing. Mm -hmm. So if I have this system in my bar, how, do, how does it get better? Um, and there's updates like iPhones and Teslas, like things like that. AR. <laughs> here it goes there it is you yep. got them started oh uh, sorry so the ability to stay on top of it and mm -hmm. that's with everything not just tech but design and the vibe and the feel um, we've always lived by we don't have to be better we have to be different and we were different from day one with the technology but we mm -hmm. were also different with the vibe the decor the two-level space um in charlotte you know, there's nowhere else that had that so being different allowed us to be successful. And it's the same thing in Penthouse and Plaza. I mean, sure, we had innovation with the technology. We were different with our decor. We were different with first to market with duck pin bowling. But we're not in an area that should make that thing successful. Honestly, we've had to work very hard to be successful over there. Mm -hmm. So the innovation portion is not just technology for me. It's, it's how can we be innovative with everything and stay in the forefront of all of that. I just, had a, I just had a hundred million dollar idea for you, and I'm only going to charge you ten percent. Oh God, um, AR is so coming. My math's no, really like, bad with this stuff, so it's yeah. probably like ten dollars. Like ten bucks, yeah, <laughs> plus or minus. Yeah. So for all the hoppins that pop up south, what if you merged your two scoops with the hoppin yard? Yeah, it's like rebranded it with the rabbits. The and issue with our sick. two scoops currently with that type of growth is we make everything in Charlotte. So at ah. that point, we'd have to get with a distribution company to actually distribute to other Could states. you imagine if you had 100 franchises and you had two scoops in every, every location? Single one. And it was yeah. themed with the rabbit because it would fit in just fine. Another thing we thought was, or we've learned, is anytime we went to a brewery for an event with two scoops, never did well. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That is, that's People are going to drink beer. They're not going to have that's super. Cream. Well, what about alcoholic ice cream 
Have you seen that? There's a spot in Charleston. At, I don't know what the name of it is, but yeah, they do alcoholic ice cream. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I wonder. Um, so you don't like my hundred million. So now I'm dude. really trying to just ruin people's life. Just <laughs> hit them with alcohol, ice cream, beers, wine, yep. alcohol. Perfect, perfect. Um, you know, I, I wonder. I think about pairing because you know I, you always think about like if you if you go to Ruth's Chris and get a and get a steak. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes that's paired with wine or yep. whatever. You know, yeah. um, if you're hanging out with your buddies, the go-to is probably beer. Um, if you're sitting down and thinking about life, maybe it's a whiskey or something, you right. know, like, like there's different alcohols for different occasions. Sitting down with my wife might be an ice cream. Might be, okay. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, I wonder if there's, if there's anything to that. Um, and also, I mean, different alcohols affect people differently too. Um, tequila makes me crazy, you know, and then the rest of them just kind of, kind of fall in place. But, um, you know, I, I wonder if the, the alcoholic ice cream, I wonder if that's a little bit more novelty, you know? I've only seen it a couple times ever. Yeah, we and had one it. One time was in Miami. Yep. Um, yeah, we had it the the once. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I don't. I, I wonder if it would pair. You know what I'm saying? Because like yeah. you said, like the like the two scoops didn't do very well whenever you went to a brewery or whatever. Yeah. So um, I don't know. it's a good. It's a good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's interesting. And then so at Hoppin, um, you have a strategic partnership to Hoppin in Charlotte, I should say, um, with the uh, the taco truck. Yep. Um, so can you um, give shed a little bit of light on that? You know how that partnership came about, and because that does very well. I mean, yeah. it's almost impossible to resist those tacos when you're there. Yeah, some of our beer. core values is is community and then collaboration, mm-hmm. and that's collaborating with local breweries, that's collaborating with food partners, that's collaborating with um, other people that do events, whether it's a balloon person, a catering company, whatever it may be. So. That is very important to us in every city that we go to, and that's why franchising was kind of important because you can be a part of your community where you live in. Mm-hmm. The food truck really came about during the pandemic. Um, he was, Taco Rico, he was about to shut down his operations wow. and got in contact. I think he might have did Penthouse once or twice, and I said, hey, ask him if he wants to, this stuff's good, ask him if he wants to go to Hoppin full time. But at that point, he had a trailer, he didn't have a truck that would fit at Hoppin's patio. Mm-hmm. so. He was 100 percent in because he saw the benefit of being in south end and being at a pretty strong location and went ahead and spent probably 40 or fifty thousand dollars to put a new truck together and wow got something that fit in that space parked it and he's been there six days a week since and probably paid it off in 10 days <laughs> probably i mean there's days that he probably sells more in tacos than we sell in in alcohol the line is always deep they are good yeah. like yeah. like i love those tacos they're like, solid if you haven't been to cutting board on a saturday or monday at penthouse cutting board is strong yeah yeah uh, we'll have to we'll check that out next time around. actually you said sunday or monday saturday or monday saturday or monday okay yeah. um yeah we'll have to put that on the list to do um man rich it's just so incredible to hear um all the things that that you have going on simultaneously and making time to come to come see us but you know it's truly a testament of of uh putting putting energy and value into your people so that you can do stuff like this and right. kind of stepping back a little bit and and uh, running things so so what do you find is is on the horizon for hopping brands you have you have the franchising opportunity um, you know um, so l- let me ask you this hopping and penthouse very similar um, what would you call like um, similar concept similar concept yeah. right so um, it's is is it kind of like your your two children? Like, do you have a favorite between them, or <laughs> not really? They're For just me, if different. I'm gonna go hang out somewhere, mm-hmm. um, I will probably hang out at Penthouse. I knew okay. it. I knew it. I knew he would choose Penthouse. Yeah, just because it's a little bit more of a laid back vibe, like me. Um, hopping is definitely hopping. It's a little bit more intense. Yeah, Penthouse um, is loungy. Yeah, Penthouse is chill. It's loungy. There's some games. There's some stuff to do to hang out. And I'm competitive, so anytime I can jump into cornhole or jump into bowling and yeah, or any pick. type of sport. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'd rather do that. You can have a party of a hundred people. Pickleball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pickleball so now, now I'm going to have to beat them in pickleball. Yeah. You're before. definitely going to lose rich. Yeah. Not a chance. I've never even played, but I guarantee you I won. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, for, for our listeners, Christian, and I took up a hobby. Actually, Christian, and I took up a hobby of playing, playing pickleball. I think the whole world picked it up by yeah now. everybody except for rich apparently has picked up didn't you find a video of like the gronk slamming a pickleball yeah, or something the gronk yeah there's i mean it's they added like five or six courts to our at our country club crazy wow. crazy yeah um it's uh it's a lot of fun so you know pickleball the handicap is from one to five and um you know christian i've been playing like three four times a week for the past three four months we just joined this league they're like, what's your what's your rank? And I'm like, man, I think we're pretty good. You know, I think we're like a three or a four. You I know? was laughing. I knew like, we weren't. <laughs> and and so day one, this is uh, four Mondays ago. Day one of our league, we uh, 
you know, we're playing two versus two and we're across from people and it's this very nice, they're awesome people. It's this married couple that are in their eighties. Okay. Like they're, they're old. They got the knee braces. They got the elbow yeah. braces. They're straight, you know, silver Fox hair, you know? And, uh, you know, I kind of look over at, at Christian with our 32, 33 year old selves. And, and, we got uh, this. I was like, man, we're going to smoke them. We're going to smoke these losers. And sure enough, we made one point on 11. <laughs> No, no, we, no, what's worse is there was five games that day. Yeah. So it was a total of 55 points we could have made, and we made three. Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 So we're awesome. So um, we're basically ones. You guys might be a point five. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We got destroyed. It was not great. It was not but great. But these are all people who found pickleball before it was cool. Like, they were doing it, like, Smoking three, us. four, five years ago. 80, they were probably doing it when they were 12. That's probably true. Bill Gates said he was doing it when he was a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we before we log off here, um, so um, do you find, is there anything else on the horizon for you that you're working on? Um, any any well kept secrets, whether it's through people or or if you're looking at any other concepts or anything like that? Uh, so we're share. obviously franchising happen first, but yeah. as we grow, we'll penthouse over the next year. So we'll we'll start that franchise FTD. So if you open up a happen in Dallas, Texas, you have the ability for a second location to be penthouse. Very similar to Charlotte, you know, if you want to open up a similar concept, but you don't want it to be exactly the same to capitalize on that market, mm -hmm. you can open up both locations. And then, if, you know, if you want to open up more around the city, you can. I so never even thought about that. Somebody owning two, like, self-ports, but they're slightly different in brand. They, yeah. they soak up different saturations And they fit the in different portions of the city, right? Like, Penthouse Definitely. is great for Plaza Midwood, and mm -hmm. Hoppin is great for South End. I agree. So being able to bring both concepts to a city gives the franchisee the ability to have more than one location, um, especially in smaller cities. Uh, bigger cities, you can open up multiple hoppins because just the growth of it and there's just sure. the amount of population. People don't travel more than a mile. Mm -hmm. Right. So being able to kind of roll that out over the next 12 to 18 months and then uh, we're opening up a new ice cream shop end of this year and Christmas Town, USA, McAdenville, so close to Gastonia and Belmont. Oh, yeah, cool. I didn't tell you about that. No, you didn't. He scored a spot in McAdenville. Yeah, yeah. so to tackle that, we are working with the guys from Knowledge Park. We're okay. kind of go co-operating out of the same facility, but it'll be a common area, almost like a like an Optimus Hall kind of food hall, but it'll just be us. It'll be ice cream and coffee. I've cool. always thought there wasn't enough to do on the sides in McAdenville. Like, yeah, yeah, so there's... The owners of that basically that entire town have a lot of stuff coming, mm -hmm. and we're kind of on the forefront of that, which is great. And we'll see how the next two years go. If it does well, we'll we'll stay there. If not, then you know, we'll go somewhere else. But I think the growth in Gastonia, the growth in Belmont, and those surrounding areas, we're going to crush it over there. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. And then we are looking for a spot in Matthews, North Carolina. If we can find something, sure, we'll move quickly on it. And then I'll probably have something in Huntersville, off exit twenty three, in the next. 18 to 12 or 12 to 24 months wow always always stuff going on with rich like you just ask and, and he's like oh yeah i have 74 things going on no big deal you know and just cool as a cucumber always yeah. man you're just like yeah i got this stuff going on very like, complicated simple stuff you know yeah it's yeah. simple everything, All the above. everything is very simple <laughs> yeah surprisingly the other other thing we have is my wife purchased a, another bridal shop in miami florida wow so lovely bride miami and then she has a lovely bride charlotte so. oh yeah we didn't even talk about your wife she uh she owns um Lovely bride. Yeah. There's several of those stores, right? Yeah, there's 18, I think, now. Um, but there's only seven franchisees, so most of the franchisees own multiple locations. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, she owns here in Miami, and she's thought about opening up some other locations, but right now we're on hold. Sticking yeah. to the major cities? Yeah, they're all big city stuff. Um, right now there's Nash. There's nothing in Nashville, but there's a lot of competition in Nashville. And then there's nothing in Raleigh. Um, and then there's some, since she has Miami, she's thought about some Florida locations. Now, how often, uh, real quick on that, on that, how often is she flying back and forth to Miami? Again, great people. Yeah. She's, she might go down there twice a year. Wow. <laughs> it's We, uh, Christian and I are owner operators and we're, we're guilty of working in rather than on quite a bit, but, yeah. um, like I just can't even imagine. I think we slightly broke Rich's golden rule though. Like yeah. we started a business that's, uh, not simple has a lot of consulting to it, you know? Yeah. Um, and one day, I'm going to get past that. Yeah, just let it hit you, and you guys go focus on the growth, right? How many more contracts can you sell if you're not stuck doing dealing with me, you know, on the day-to-day -day stuff of, hey, why isn't this done, or why does this not happen? Um, you'll see a, just a change in growth. I mean, if it costs you an additional fifty or $100,000 to hire that person, then you figure out how many contracts do I need to cover that new person. Yeah, and it's then, like a math problem. 
That's all it is. It's it probably makes you hungrier too, because all of a sudden you're back on the chopping block again. With uh, back to day one. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're like, I gotta get hungry again. Yeah. The the thing and now you have freedom, freedom at day one. You know, the thing that that um, I think restricts us even more than than um, the financial aspect of it, because of course, you know, you hire more people, you take a pay cut. That's the way yep. it goes. It's math, you know. But um, Christian and I both really like what we do, um, yeah. and that's that's the shitty thing because like you kind of want to. Um, you, you kind of want to be hands on in some in some things, yeah. Um, and then you know, it's I'm my favorite parts the conversations with people like you, like actually yeah. thinking out the path, you know. Yeah. But you're right. If I gave that away, the business would probably triple. Business would triple. You still have the ability to go do that. You're right. With the people we like, we get to choose. Mm-hmm. That's so. If that's we don't the work biggest with you, difference. It's not because we don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Four years, Rich. Four years. You're in our lives forever. So that's right. you know, that's it. The ability to to grow, but also keep your hands on. I mean, I still want to go into the bar and I will do stuff that just every, my whole staff would do. I mean, I'll go in the office and clean up and make it look better or go into the back dish room and do dishes. Like that stuff is peace of mind. And that's stuff that I appreciate doing just because it gives me away from the more mentally stressful stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a point where you guys just got to take that leap. Sure. You love that portion of it, Mm -hmm. but if you continue to do that portion, then where's your freedom come in? Right. And you can always do that portion. Yeah. It's like my brother owns barbershops. He has opened up his second barbershop. His goal is to get to a point to where he can focus on a minimal schedule, cut the clients that he knows he's had forever, and just grow the brand, open up more locations. But it also gives him the freedom four days a week if he wants to go golfing or if he wants to do whatever. Mm -hmm. Because he's in a business that he has to be behind the chair cutting people's heads. Right. Yeah. But... He's thought bigger picture and mm-hmm. said, all right, I have South End shop. I got a Bill of Heights shop. Now fill those barbers, fill those chairs up. And all right, and we did the math on it a couple of days ago. At what point can I step away? Mm-hmm. Um, but he said if he, if he was a billionaire, he would always cut hair. So he's not, he's not going to stop cutting hair because yeah, he thing. can. He yeah. um, at that point, it's just I want some freedom, mm-hmm. but I still love to cut hair. And how, how many... Do I want to do a week? I could work seven days a week if I want to. I could work one day a week if I want to. Yeah, yeah. it's incredible. Um, well, we gotta we gotta sign off here, Rich. Always a pleasure, uh, Christian. We gotta ask our fun question. I don't know. I, hmm. Why do I always suck at this? I'm like the worst at this. We always want to sign off with VR? like a fun VR. No. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm thinking about? What we were talking about before the show. Uh, the uh, always a fun question. Um, you wait a couple of years from now. You're going to be selling tickets to like no, little live shows God, you have no. in your bar like, to people who aren't already on even. There. I don't know if we Ten talked about it, watch it or you. I don't know if we talked about it or I talked about it with somebody else, but I've already thought about a VR situation where oh, you come in the hop and see. No, I'm it's telling you, the Reese. self-serve wall, but you might have you might be in a jungle. Yeah, but you know the tables are there, the self-serve. Yeah, there, you and you I can talked still, about that. Yeah, it might have been you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would make sense that it was him. That yeah, it would make we sense. We were having a full conversation. You guys are ruining my day. It's a great idea. I think it's coming. I think within like five to ten years, you're going to be on the front end of it. And it's going to be great. And I actually think it's going to be our world. Well, he doesn't like this idea, but it's going to have to be. Because VR and augmented reality and like the billboards and how you're presented in that area is going to be like a website today. Yeah. And I think that's like some vision for the future. All right. <laughs> 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 Rich, thank you so much for joining Christian. Love, give, love giving you a hard time. Um, mustaches next time, gentlemen. Uh, Rich, we'll see you on the show in three years, man. Thanks Appreciate so much. It.